Well, we've all had experience. How many have had experiences on the floor when you couldn't get up? I think most of us have had those kind of experiences. What I notice is, is that what used to happen on the floor, and, and you know, I think one of the reasons on the floor you sort of, you know, you're totally relaxed in God, and he can sort of do what he wants, but usually, uh, you know, if we're sitting or standing or in some other position, we're pretty still, pretty much in control still, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember the night that I first got stuck. We were up in uh, Bismarck in Mandan, North Dakota, and they had introduced me, and I started walking from the front seat to the platform the first night I was there, and right in the middle, I got stuck. And the worst thing was I not only couldn't move, I couldn't say anything. And here was the pastor that hardly knew me and the congregation that didn't know me. And they're all sort of looking and here's the, you know, the evangelist that's standing there and not, <laughs> not moving. And after, <laughs> you say, well, how long? You know, sometimes those times seem like forever. <laughs> and uh, after a while, the Lord just released my voice to say, I'm stuck. I can't move. <laughs> and then uh, some time after that, he released me, and I walked on, on up to the platform. But I find that in these great anointings that these are things are happening more often. Sometimes you just turn to walk from, I think it was the other night from the pulpit, I turned to walk back after making an announcement, and I got sort of stuck uh, looking in the other direction, you know. So I was standing for some time with my back to the people. Isn't it exciting God's doing it differently? I mean, you know, we don't want to be able to say, well, this is the next thing on the program. Oh, <laughs> and one of the key things about revival is actually being sensitive to the Holy Spirit throughout the service. What it does, it keeps you with a focus on the Lord. You know how we used to sort of focus in on the Lord at certain moments in the service, and the rest of the service you could sort of do what you wanted. But you get to, no, you have the focus on the Lord. <laughs> Last night, you know, when the, and the release always comes, that sovereign aspect in which suddenly God comes down and rewards our expectation. That's the sovereign part. That's the part that you don't really know when's going to happen. When that sovereign aspect of the service is going to come in. And it's wonderful to watch and see when that sovereign aspect comes. Now, last night it came when we started going around. <laughs> we were sort of lightly running, running in place around the, the front, and suddenly, now the thing that was interesting to me last night <laughs> was that there was an unusual glory way over there and way over there. And I mean, if somebody had said, where's the, so you know how you think, well, where's the high point of the glory in the place? You'd have probably thought we're well, right here. But when we were going around, when I got up there, I could hardly keep going. And then I'd, after I sort of moved past that place and on across here, it was fine. You know, I was feeling the, the presence of the Lord and the glory, but suddenly when I got over there, I could hardly keep going. Oh, I thought, well, I don't know why the... I mean, I don't know why those places were suddenly so full of the glory. Because in the natural, we'd say, well, they're sort of on the on the outskirts, they're on the perimeter. Unless, maybe that's where the angels have been staying to look on. 
and they've saturated it. I don't know <laughs> if we always had our eyes open in the spirit to know these things, we would learn the patterns of heaven more. Oh, then yes. oh, that's what God's teaching us. Oh, we're not just having a great meeting for one service, but out of that one service, we've got to glean patterns that God's moving in so that in another service we can flow more in the patterns of God and less in what we've been flowing in. <laughs> A couple of nights ago, now you, most of you know that we have three basketball coaches from the Richmond area that have been coming almost, well, since the second night of camp. And uh, the way they started coming out here one of them had gone down to Pensacola and bought my book and looked in the back and said, oh, that's near us. They live in Richmond and we're out 15 miles away in Ashland. And they got out here for the second night of camp. And one of them was uh, sort of a non-believer period. But God has been working in their lives. And a couple of nights ago, one of the coaches brought out his son, who's getting ready to go to Liberty College. Now, this man's a Baptist and is active in the Baptist youth movement. And he brought his son out because his son's going to college, I think, today. And his son had never been here, and he didn't want the... <laughs> He didn't want uh, the season, he didn't want his son to get away without coming out to one of these meetings. And when he came, brought him up on the, well, I think earlier that night he had been out under the power, on the floor. Never had been out under the power before. I believe Sister Jane touched him and he fell out under the power. And, and uh, at first he didn't tell what God had done, but Later when he was sitting next to me on the platform and I began to speak to him about what I knew God is doing out at Liberty. You know, sometimes we think, well, God's, you know, these are conservative schools and not, uh, not open to the Spirit. But I understand that the new music ministry at Jerry Falwell's is Spirit-filled. It's not sort of public knowledge. But everybody notices that the music's different. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? God's infiltrating. <laughs> Just infiltrating across America. Oh, that's what he's doing. He's infiltrating in offices and infiltrating in our government. And he's infiltrating... Oh, he's just putting the, the, the Holy Ghost infiltrators... <laughs> <laughs> that are coming into places and the atmosphere is changing and things are, things are being different. Uh, oh, yes. Well, I happen to know that Jerry Falwell's son has a marketing company, son-in-law. And, you know, when you've got a lot of college kids, they all need little jobs. So those college kids come over and they do these little jobs in this marketing company. And uh, this was the company, this is the company that handles getting out the special tapes for Benny Hinn. I mean, you don't just handle 70 or 80,000 tapes every couple of months marketing them, getting in the mail, getting a, without, and you know, holding Holy Ghost tapes. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you see what God's doing? It, it's exciting, exciting. And that was the company that uh, handled sending out my book, Glory. We sent it out last September to 15,000 pastors free from a computer list. And uh, <laughs> so they had, they had 15,000 of, of my books right there on the property last year. 
See what I'm saying? God's just doing it. And when I was talking with this young man, I began to see that he was going to be a fiery evangelist and began to speak it into his life. And everything I said, he said, that's what God just told me when I was on the floor. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's what God just told me. His dad looked up surprised, son, did God speak to you? Yes, that's what God just told me when I was on the floor. Now this boy, <clears throat> this boy's mother noticed something different in the voice. She hadn't been up here all summer. But last night she was here. She, there was such a difference in her son in that one day. She began to call and make inquiries. What in the world was happening? Up. <laughs> oh, I said, well, how did she like it? I said, well, she got a little upset. I said, well, wonderful. Wonderful. You know, if they're indifferent, be concerned. If they get stirred up, be happy <laughs> that God is doing something. Oh, he's stirring the people up. Amen. And I tell you, it's not going to be the last time. Oh, no, she'll be up here again and again. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see the walls coming down. Hallelujah. One of the things I want you folks to begin doing is just talking revival. Yes. Every little thing you hear God's doing, talk it. Amen. Talk revival. The more you talk it, the more it multiplies. The more you talk it, the more it increases. And if you only have one story that you know of of what God's doing, tell it all the time Amen. until everybody gets tired of hearing because they all, <laughs> oh yes, if you'll talk revival, Paul told his story again and again. He never was ashamed of telling his story. I was on the road to Damascus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Suddenly the light shone. He, he told that story. Didn't mind telling it before kings. Told it before ordinary men. He, he, that was his story. And uh, I find that when you hear what God's doing and begin to tell it, you fan revival. It's one of the ways. You fan it. You're fanning it. The embers are there. But we're fanning it. We're creating in the lives of people a desire for more. Amen. If God could do that for that man's son, what will he do for my son? That's the way the, the, the mind begins to work. That's the way the spirit begins to respond. If God can do that for them, what will he do for me? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, sometimes trying to be so deep that we don't reach people. By the time you quote four or five King James verses to these people, they're already lost. But when you tell an experience, and maybe half of one verse, or one verse said in your own words, <laughs> You'll find that God will just begin to make it work. Hallelujah. Sister, come up here. I want you to share. Yeah. What, what's your name again? Nancy. Nancy was here during the couple of weeks that I spoke at the beginning of camp meeting. And she, how many were here the night she had that wonderful experience? Now, see, all the rest of the people weren't here. So they don't know... We were, <coughs> we were speaking about, uh, I think, the movements of the Holy Spirit that night. And uh, that was a night we were just talking about the Holy Spirit and the movements. And she had this wonderful experience. And I wanted to share a little bit from that standpoint. And then I want you to tell 
what you said to me yesterday. Don't tell what you said yesterday till the, near the end. Well, get ready for something crazy. <laughs> First of all, um, I belong to a Baptist church, and I have belonged there for like 30 years. And, uh, a little louder so they can hear. But I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in 19, 1990, and uh, since that time, our church has, has been moving toward things in the spirit. At any rate, I came down here the first week when she was speaking. I had a desire in my heart to come because I had read the book Glory. And I came and about three nights after I was here, I fell out on the floor over here. And while I was just laying there on the floor, the music was going and the worship was taking place. I could hear all these voices around me. Some of them were laughing. Some of them were just praising God and talking. And I became aware that, that there was two realms that I was aware of. I was aware of the natural realm that I could hear everything taking place around me and everybody laughing. What I heard people talking in the seats behind me. But at the same time, I started hearing a sound that was coming from the keyboard. And this sound started to affect my body. And it seemed as if my head was detached from my body. And my body started responding to the sound that was coming out of the keyboard. And to begin with, my left shoulder started to rotate. It started to go round and round and round like a wheel. And, <laughs> and I laid there thinking to myself, if anybody's watching, this is ridiculous looking because my shoulder's just going like a wheel, just wiggling. And I was concerned with thinking about uh, what was happening to my body. And then all of a sudden, as a result of this sound that was coming through the, the music, it come over to my right shoulder, and then I had two shoulders that were moving like wheels. And as I laid there and observed this and thought, God, this is awesome. What on earth? Because my mind had nothing to do with this, and it was like I was observing my body responding to a different voice that was coming through that music. And my head was thinking com other things completely, and I all kinds of things trying to stop what was happening in my body. Well, as I kept listening to this, all of a sudden my whole body from the head down became a wheel. Now, when my shoulders were rolling, they were all rolling to the right. They were going somewhere to the right, like a wheel rolling to the right. Well, when my whole body started rolling, I was still headed to the right, headed to the right, and all of a sudden, the sound came through this music and my body shifted and I started rolling forward like a wheel going forward. And as I was rolling forward, sometimes the, the movement of those, the wheel would slow down and it would get real slow. And when, then I would hear uh, the ones in the praise and worship and Sister Ruth was up here singing. I would hear words that came that she was speaking and then my body would start rolling real fast again. The wheel would pick up and it would roll real fast. Well, this happened for a few minutes, slowing down and then picking up real fast. And I was laying there thinking to myself, I wonder what would happen if I took a deep drink of the Holy Ghost. And so I, I started like, I thought, well, I'm going to experiment with this thing and see what's going to take place. So I took a deep drink, <laughs> and when I did, it was like electricity flew all through my body, and it was just like a shock just to going out, and my body was just trembling and shaking like that all over. And then immediately, the wheel was just flying. It was just flying. It was flying. So 
in a, in a few minutes, this started subsiding and slowing down again, and I thought, well, I'll take another drink. Same thing happened again. The wheels were just flying, and in the midst of those wheels flying, all of a sudden, I became aware. It felt like, it felt like I was the body of Christ, and it felt like I don't mean just his body. I mean his body worldwide. I felt like that every individual worldwide that was part of the body of Christ was in me and I was in them. And I felt a oneness and a unity like I can't even describe. And all of a sudden, it was like this wheel that was going forward, it was like the whole body of Christ was moving forward. We were rolling. And it was like it was a, a, a giant machine of some kind that was rolling forward worldwide. And we were all hearing the same voice. And we were obeying that voice that was coming. And if the voice said turn to the right, we turned to the right. If it said go to the left, we flowed with ever what that voice was saying. And at the same time, the mind was completely detached. And it was as if the Lord was showing me the difference between the spirit and the soul and as I lay there experiencing this it was like finally when it started lifting and it started lifting and it started lifting I just like I stopped drinking and when I stopped drinking it just kind of lifted off and then I became aware of all these laying around laughing, and I just started laughing then and just laughed and laughed and laughed because it was so strange what had just happened. Well, I went to bed that night, and I got up the next morning. Well, I, the wheels turned all night long while I was in the bed. I got up the next morning, and I came down here for prayer, and I knew my life was forever changed, and it would never be the same again. It seemed as if there was eyes in those wheels and those eyes were running to and fro all over this earth looking for those that love the Lord to bless them. And it seemed as if my these, all these things and places and peoples were coming to my mind and it was seemed as if the eyes of God inside of me as I was even thinking about these places that they were receiving blessing. They were receiving blessing because it was his eyes that was running to and fro in me blessing these people, those that love him. He desires to show himself strong on behalf of those who love him. So as the day progressed, all the scriptures I heard just sounded so different. There was like a different kind of understanding that I had. And scriptures kept coming to me all day long about in Ephesians when it says, Lord, open the eyes of their understanding, their comprehension, that they might be able to comprehend. And I felt like I saw that eyes was plural. It was like, it wasn't just like the eye of the Spirit. It was like eyes open the eyes and it seemed like there must be lots of eyes and also I knew ears to hear in ways we've never heard before like those sounds those sounds of glory that was coming those sounds that was affecting my body so as I heard and as the day went on I came and laid at the altar and I heard sounds coming again through the music and it sounded like a choir singing a, a tribal nation of people just singing and singing and singing and I raised up and looked and it seemed to be coming out of uh, an African brother from the far end down there it was like these sounds coming out of his mouth that were like sounds of glory that sounded like a nation of people praising God. And I went to bed that night and I put on some earplugs. I brought earplugs with me so I wouldn't be distracted by the noise in the room to be able to sleep. And just as soon as I laid my head on the pillow, I heard these, this worship going on in heaven and it was they were singing when the saints go marching in. And I was shocked by what they were singing. I, some, I don't know, I was just surprised for some reason or other that that's what they were singing. And the chorus, the only words I know to that song is the chorus. And as the chorus was being sung, there was 
trumpets blowing, there was horns blowing. It was a mighty, mighty celebration. And God allowed me to know that that's happening right now, that the saints are marching in right now. It's not somewhere by and by in the sky. It's right now all over the world. The saints are marching in, and that rejoicing is taking place in glory as they march in all over the world. And I heard four or five straight verses to that song, and I don't know what any of the verses are. And I haven't been able to find the words to that song anywhere this summer. I've looked, and I have not found a songbook anywhere that has that song in it. Well, praise God. Well, anyway, since that time, what I, what I have experienced at home every day since I left here, I've been aware of these wheels turning every day. Every day. And if I let myself go in the Spirit... My whole body just wants to just move just like a wheel. And I have to restrain it because it'll, it looks so funny. I mean, it looks so funny in the natural to other people that don't understand what's happening. And within our, and it's like even in the worship, everything has made me aware that everything is turning. Oh, it's turning. Everything is turning. In this life, everything is turning. The world is turning. We're, everything is turning, and it seems like I've become aware of it in the motions of my hands, in the motions of my head. Everything has started turning in my life. And I asked Sister Ruth last night, I said, can you tell me, I've been wondering, and I'm thinking maybe you the only person I know to ask, what am I supposed to do with this turning? Like... <laughs> I, I said, what, what I realized, this turning is making me aware of the Spirit of God in the movement of the Spirit of God. But I mean, beyond that, do you know what I'm supposed to do with this, what, what's happening? Uh, like, I can't just be a wheel all day long. You know? It's, it's like, I mean, I could just sit and move like that all day long and, and feel like I have got in the groove of moving. And like that I'm in a groove of some kind. And I mean, I can ride down the road and be rolling and moving and just, just, but, but I was thinking, well, there must be some other purpose. What's happening here? What, where am I going? I mean, it, at any rate, uh, I'd praise God because I know, well, it's just, I, I don't even begin to comprehend all of it, but I know that, uh, He's, he's just become so real. And, and the, I, I know since that time, a couple of days after that, God spoke to me and he said, I was just praising him. I said, God, I am a spirit. You, you know, uh, we're too much aware of the reality that we call reality. That's not reality. The reality of all this is that we are spirits and we have a soul and we live in a body. And we are going somewhere. We're going to live forever somewhere. We are going to live forever. And the awareness of that, this has made me so aware, aware, aware of this different realm. And as I was praising God a couple of days after this happened, he said to me, he says, and it, I said, God, I am a spirit. And he says, and it doth not yet appear what you shall be. And I went and looked that up in the scripture and it says, you're the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what you shall be. We don't know what we are. We don't know what we're capable of doing. We don't know what we're capable of being. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Praise you. And it's like, it's like un unlimited, unlimited in the Spirit. Unlimited, unlimited. No limitations, no limitations, no limitations. Well, I just praise Him and thank Him because as we become aware of this realm and walk in this realm, we walk with no limitations. 
And it's like only as our eyes observe the natural that it limits us. The moment we move back into that soul realm and the body realm, we're limited instantly. But it's as that we stay in that in in that spirit realm, we're unlimited. And it and it's like awesome. There's there's beyond our comprehension what God is going to do with his body. Because we are his body. We are his body, physical, worldwide. And you know, it affected me when I got home because let me tell you, brothers and sisters, by belonging to a Baptist church, a spirit filled Baptist church, that has not been too pleasing to some of the other churches in our denomination when that happened in our church and it has not been too well accepted and our pastor uh, and some of our people have been thinking about withdrawing from the Southern Baptist Convention and you know I had felt like we needed to that we needed to come out from under that covering but you know what this business with the wheels may has made me feel different let me tell you something. I went home and I said, Pastor, I got to tell you something. The, the day after I got home, we were having a celebration, a picnic, a denominational picnic with all the churches coming together. And I didn't normally even want to go to no picnic like that because I knew what they were going to be like. But when I found out this picnic was going on, brother, I went to the picnic. And I come home and I told our pastor, Pastor, let me tell you something. Because something God has showed me that we are to strive for oneness in the spirit. Not oneness in doctrine, but oneness in the spirit. Oneness in the spirit. And I, for that brother that knows the Lord but just don't know about the baptism and all that, he's going to come in there. He's coming in there. We don't need to break those ties. We don't need to do anything that's going to break that fellowship of spirit that we have with our brothers and sisters. And God showed me over there where it says that when he gives that five-fold ministry to the church that he's going to have teachers and preachers and apostles and all that so that they would all might come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ he's just not talking about sinners out there that don't know him he's talking about those denominational people that have not come to the knowledge of what we're talking about and that we are to be the teachers the preachers the apostles those five, those that will teach them so I just praise God and I thank him for what he's doing because, oh God, I give him glory and honor because we are one in the spirit and doctrines are going to go by the wayside. We're going to move in oneness and unity. And our, our Baptist brothers and sisters, boy, they have a heart for missions. They have a heart for God, but there's just a whole lot. A whole lot of them don't know about the spirit realm and so much I don't know about the spirit realm. But we're learning and we need to learn together in that oneness of the spirit and love. So I just praise him and I thank him. Lord, he's glorious, glorious. I'm so excited. Yes. yes. Well, uh, last night, uh, as Sister Ruth was talking about when that glory was falling around here, she come just to kind of dancing along past me. And I was sitting in a seat because I had just felt so drunk that I didn't feel like I could stand up. But she reached out her hand there, and I thought, well, i got to make forth the effort here because she's got her hand out. And, and I wanted to be able to hold her hand and go around this circle, right? <laughs> I got up, and I headed around the circle, and then she got so she couldn't go any further. And then I was so I couldn't go no further. And I sat over there, and I'm telling you, I became a wheel. I mean, a big-time wheel. It was like, it would let that thing go, and it would just, just make big loops, just looping and looping and looping. And I was just holding on to keep my body from just, from, from just getting, falling in every direction. Well, this morning, as we're standing here praising God, while all that beautiful praise and worship was taking place, it was like a funnel cloud. It was like a funnel cloud, and I'm telling you, the praise and worship, it, did you ever see anything caught up in a windstorm that it was like a funnel cloud, and it would pick up like your jackets and papers, and it would spin them round and round and round, and take them high, 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 take them high up. It was like a funnel cloud that felt like that the praise and worship was being picked up by the wind of the Spirit, and it was going round and round and round, and it was just going straight up into the heavenlies to God. It was just ascending to God, the praise and worship, and it was doing it just like a tornado that was spinning round and round was what I felt like was taking place when that was going on. So I, I Lord, who knows? I, you just don't know. 
And, and you weren't like this before. No, 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 I remember that night that was so interesting. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, we don't perceive what God's doing with people when they're on the floor. We don't perceive. This is, uh, uh, we get an occasional testimony, but they're great. And if she hadn't come up and I hadn't started drawing her out, <laughs> We wouldn't have heard, but I remember that uh, next night I had her say a little bit, and she was commenting how that when this turning began in her wheel, I'd been, in her shoulder, I'd been preaching on uh, the wheel within the wheel, or maybe we were singing about the wheel within the wheel. I think we were singing it, wasn't it? I don't think I'd preached on it. We were singing that, and I was speaking about the movements of the Holy Spirit and how we join ourselves to those movements and God just uh, began teaching her. But she said that when her shoulder began to turn, she put her hand up, trying to cover the, <laughs> trying to cover the movement of her shoulder. You know, <clears throat> we often think when we're under the power that everybody sees what's happening to us. Everybody else is so caught up themselves in the spirit and so lost in the spirit that they themselves don't even know what's happening to you. We wouldn't have known what was happening to sister. But she kept feeling that everybody could see this strange movement that was going on with her shoulder. And last night when she came and she said, Sister Ruth, she says, what do I do? I said, well, what do you mean what do I do? She says, well, I could just be a wheel day and night. I said, well... What you need to do is when you've got to do your work, do your work. Amen? But if you've got time to be a wheel, <laughs> then it's better to let God move through you. Amen? Let God move through you and accomplish eternal purposes because one of the things that he taught her was that he was using her for the body of Christ universally. Amen. She began to get that identification that what she was doing was not just affecting one or two. Amen. But she was joining herself to those purposes of God and God was using her <laughs> for the body of Christ universally. And I, you know, she remember she commented that when she stopped drinking, that then that movement stopped, that was initially. And if she's not uh, sort of giving herself to the things of the Spirit, you know, she's busy doing the natural things, I'm sure that there's movement within that continues just as that, that pray without ceasing continues, doesn't it? I mean, you, you don't even, your mind doesn't have to be thinking about praying, your spirit's praying. When you're a person of the Spirit and living in the Spirit, your Spirit's praying. It has nothing to do with what your mind's doing. And <laughs> hallelujah. And, uh, and I said, do the things that you have to do. We all have to, responsibilities. If we have jobs, if we have certain things that we've got to, we're committed to do, do those things. But when we have those moments, give ourselves to the things that are eternal uh, and to the realm of the Spirit. <laughs> and that's what he's teaching us to do. Let me just read a few verses from Ezekiel this morning. We've had such a tremendous teaching by the Spirit that we don't need much further this morning. Hallelujah. I'm just going to turn in the Scripture to this portion concerning the wheel. <clears throat> These are the living creatures that uphold the very throne of God that move in their authority throughout the world. And uh, the scripture speaks a little bit about it. I'm going to uh, uh, drop down to verse 12, Ezekiel 1 verse 12. And they went everyone straight forward. Whither the Spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. 
And as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of, uh, of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightnings. And you know, we've been having some of those lightnings going forth in the service here. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces and the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a burl and they four had one likeness and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. <clears throat> what is he saying? Their appearance and their work. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their appearance and their work was like a wheel within the middle of a wheel. This work of the Spirit of God appeared, amen, as if there was a wheel in the middle of a wheel uh, here in that earlier part of, uh, of Ezekiel. It speaks concerning the fire that enfolds itself. What that means is there's a fire within the fire. Amen. A fire within the fire. Hallelujah. That fire, that turning of God within. You know how it is when we first get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a fire <laughs> within a fire. Hallelujah. That motivation and what God's bringing us back to is that same realm in the spirit in which the spirit is in control and we're not. Amen. Amen. In the beginning days, we're often willing to let the spirit have his way. And then we get to the place that we get caught up with the cares of life and get caught up with other things and we don't give the same opportunity, the same time to the spirit. But in these days, God's bringing us back and he's bringing us to that point that we want those great movements of the Holy Spirit to come forth out of the depth of our being. Oh yes, the wheel within the wheel turning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You say, well, how, do, how are we gonna, how's it gonna happen? Give yourself to the Spirit in these great anointings. Even if you're tired, don't leave the tabernacle when there are great anointings just to go to bed early. It's better, even if you're tired, to give yourself. I find even in weariness, and thank God it's been so many years since I have really known what weariness is. God's blessed me and given me a supernatural strength. But in the times when I would be really weary, I found that it was easier to yield to the Spirit because all of the, <laughs> all of the, uh, <clears throat> the resistances of the flesh are tired out. <laughs> oh yes, all the resistances of the flesh are gone. They're tired. Let them let them go to sleep and let the spirit begin to work. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't even mind if somebody falls asleep in my meeting. Because I know this, that there's an anointing here. Hallelujah. We grew up sleeping under the pew. I was in a church recently and I saw a child sleeping under the pew. I was so happy. Thank God that every church doesn't have a nursery Amen. And, and that there's still children sleeping under the pews because they may be asleep under the pew, but there's an anointing. Hallelujah. That's permeating their being. Hallelujah. If they fall asleep in the chair, let them sleep. If some of you come, one of those two young, attractive girls that have been here, they've just gone home to go to school, one from Northern Virginia and the other from... Uh, Charleston, South Carolina, both called Elizabeth. Some of you met the two Elizabeths that had been here. They said, oh, we love to go to the afternoon service. 
They said, there's such a rest there. <laughs> they said, we rest better in the afternoon service than we do up in our beds. I understood what they meant. They weren't being facetious. Uh, what, uh, if you need to nod, it's better to do it in the service and let that anointing come on you. Let the resistances of the flesh go. Let the spirit begin to work. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bringing us into a place in which we know the difference between the flesh and the spirit. I remember one night in Jerusalem, <clears throat> we had just had some people that arrived who were from New Zealand and I greeted them just before the service began. And uh, the service be began and I was leading from the piano and I was leading the praise and worship and I started having a vision. Now on one side, I'm having, I'm, I'm leading praise and worship. That was, that was in one aspect even of that uh, realm of the spirit. On the other side, I was seeing a vision of New Zealand the whole time the praise and worship service continued. I, I think it was the longest vision I ever had. Most of my visions are sort of half-second ones that go like that. This one lasted about a half hour on Wellington, New Zealand. And... Uh, and so when I got up to preach, I was preaching, I think, from Ezekiel, and I started preaching, and the vision continued. This time, it was a different aspect of the vision, and it lasted the whole time I preached my sermon. I'm preaching one aspect. I mean, it had nothing to do with my sermon other than the fact that God was teaching me. He likes to teach us. Amen. He is the great teacher. Hallelujah. And oftentimes the preachers will say it can't be. That's not the way God does things, but that's not true. God is teaching the hungry in these days to know the people and to know the spirit and to be a people of the, of the spirit. Hallelujah. And he's bringing us more and more into that greater realm of the Spirit of God and the whole, the whole service. We didn't have a big crowd, but one of the great lessons that I learned, God showed me things that night that have been a great protection to me. Things that he was teaching me about this peace movement called Greenpeace that environmentalists just feel as a, an environmental uh, group, but it's got other aspects to it that the Lord showed me while I was preaching that night. Uh, but on one side, there was this realm in which I was leading the service. I was preaching. On the other side, God was keeping, I think that vision must have lasted about an hour and a half the whole time I preached whole time I led the service, God was doing two different things to me at the same time. Now, I haven't had that again like that. But we will move more and more into the things of the Spirit. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every time you fall out under the power, don't ever get up and say nothing happened. You may say, I am not conscious of all that God did for me <laughs> while I was under the power of God. Hallelujah, don't take it for granted. It is a glorious thing which God begins to work. I always feel that when this happens, it's God operating on us. You know, the... The doctor could operate on you standing up, but he stretches you out. 
He puts you on the operating table uh, and he operates on you. He gives you a little uh, uh, anesthetic and, uh, and you're sort of out while he's operating. And sometimes I'm just as glad not to know what he's doing to me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You know, when, you, when the doctor operates and you get off the operating table and he says, well, the cancer's gone. You really don't want to see the cancer. No. You don't, want to, you don't want to see what he took out. You just want to say, oh, thank God it's gone. Well, that's the way it is. There's sometimes God's taking out and sometimes he's putting in. And I believe that if we'll hurry up and let him do the taking out, then we're going to have times under the power of God in which he's putting in. He's putting in revelation knowledge. We are not always conscious of what he's doing. But suddenly you'll be preaching. And you'll preach in a realm of thought that you've never had, and you think, where did I, that come from? <laughs> And you remember when you were under the power of God and God began to do something new in your spirit. Hallelujah, God working in us these glories. Hallelujah, these are glory days. He's working everything under his glory. This wheel within the wheel is turning within us with the living creatures. It says that the spirit... <clears throat> we know their work was in the wheel. Let me just see that verse that speaks concerning the uh, spirit of the living creatures was in the wheel. Verse 20, whither the soever the spirit was to go, they went thither was their spirit to go and the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature or the spirit of life was in the wheels and God is bringing forth a spirit of life within us, an energizing of the Holy Ghost, a power, a demonstration beyond anything that we've ever known before. Hallelujah. A revelation knowledge that we're going to flow in. Oh, yes, revelation knowledge beyond <laughs> anything that we've ever experienced. Hallelujah. And God is doing it for us in this realm of praise and worship. When the Lord says come up higher, the way, the easy way to come up higher is yielding to the Holy Spirit. Usually, just a little more, you're there. <laughs> just a little more yielding. Oh, you're higher. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit is speaking of greater miracles, oftentimes all we need to do is worship in order to cause that, that atmosphere for miracles to happen. If you want greater miracles, there must be greater worship because his presence comes down in that fuller way, in that manifestation of his glory and of his power. Hallelujah. As we are worshiping, Hallelujah, let us be greater and greater worshipers. If we're going to see greater miracles, we're going to worship more. I had wanted to be at the Benny Hinn meeting in Dallas for at least one night, and I had arranged my ticket. This was a couple of weeks ago, and of course, camp meeting was on, and uh, I was planning to fly down, had it all arranged to meet some friends there, and, and uh, Pastor Benny was expecting me to come, but I woke up in the morning and I just knew that I couldn't get away. <clears throat> I 
But I was anxious to get to that Dallas meeting because you folks know God's given me a word that as the revival breaks, the Dallas is going to be the center of it in America. And I knew they would be the greatest meetings. I've seen that particular hall and vision, and I knew that the meetings would be unbelievable. And I hear, I, uh, I hear that Pastor Benny has spoken several times since the Dallas meeting and said the greatest miracles of his life took place in Dallas, Texas a couple of weeks ago. Isn't that exciting? He's moving into a greater and greater miracle realm, but he's a worshiper. And he does one of the finest jobs of leading people into realms of worship. And the miracles take place in the presence of the Lord. And God is teaching us how to be that spiritual people. And as our sister has known the Lord and been seeking him, but suddenly in that one night, God began to bring her into some realms that have totally changed her life. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Uh, concerning the Baptists, God showed us one night when, uh, in June, I believe it was, when we were down in Gainesville, Georgia, in a former Baptist church. This pastor was... Uh, filled with the Spirit and left, I think, the Baptist denomination about 10 months ago. But when I was there that night, I had a vision of the outpouring on the Baptist. And I saw it coming in, not through the pastors, but coming in the front door. Now, usually in a church, the pulpit is, is farther away from the door. And I saw the river coming in and it was coming up over the heads of the people and it was coming up and ultimately came to the pulpit, but it came in through the congregation. And uh, I declared that night because I knew this, that the reason that the Baptists uh, uh, have not yet been ushered in is that God is waiting for the river to get a little higher. And... Uh, it was high enough. It wasn't just coming down along the, the, the uh, floor, but it was high enough that it came in and went over the heads of the people as they were sitting in the congregation and covered their heads. And that's what the river is going to do. <laughs> it's going to come right in and cover the heads of the people, and we're going to see a great move of God among the Baptists, uh, and uh, I'm sure your pap pastor was probably amazed at your new understanding when everybody else probably was encouraging him to leave the, the Baptist uh, uh, Federation, and you were encouraging him to stay in for the greater thing that God's doing. Amen. God wants us to see the greater thing. You and I are on the verge of the greater thing. And many of us have only a got to allow God to put the greater into our spirit in the at the altar, on the floor, in the midst of these great anointings. God wants to change our thinking and give us uh, spiritual understandings that we've never perceived before. And he'll do it as we come. Hallelujah. If you fall out under the power, notice this. She said she could still hear people talk. She wasn't out. She wasn't in a trance. But suddenly as she continued to worship uh, the Lord, she began to be conscious that there was another realm and that realm began to get louder so that she was less conscious of the natural realm and more conscious of the spiritual realm. And God's going to make us more conscious of the spiritual realm and less conscious of the natural realm. And he's going to cause us to be a people that, as she said, she's a spirit. 
and God's a spirit. And you begin to be conscious, uh, hallelujah, <laughs> that we're like God in that aspect, that he's a spirit and we're a spirit. Uh, and he's causing the spirit part of us uh, to come forth into a dimension uh, it never has been before. Praise the Lord. How many are hungry for God? Oh, yes, hungry for these greater things. Let's just come forward. As, let's sing the wheel within the wheel. There's a wheel within the wheel, and it's turning in me. It's turning in me. It's turning in me. There's a wheel within the wheel, and it's turning. And me, it's turning in the glory. There's a wheel within the wheel, and it's turning in me. It's turning in me. It's turning in me. There's a wheel within the wheel. And it's turning in me, it's turning in the glory. There's a fire within the fire, and it's burning in me, it's burning in me. It's burning in me, there's a fire. Within the fire, and it's burning in me. It's burning in the glory. I can see, I can see, I can see the glory. I can see the glory. I can see the glory. I can see, I can see, I can see the glory. I am turning in the glory. And there's a fire within the fire, and it's burning in me. Oh, it's burning. Fire within the fire, and it's burning in me. It's burning in the glory. There's a fire within the fire, and it's burning in me. Let it burn. It's burning in me. Within the fire, and it's burning in me. It's burning in the glory. There's a wheel. There's a wheel. Within the wheel. Within the wheel. And it's burning. Begin to declare it. It's turning in me. It's turning. There's a wheel, there's a wheel, within the wheel, and it's turning in me, it's turning in the glory. I can see, I can see, I can see, I can see the glory, I can see the glory. I can see I can see I can see I can see the glory I can see the glory Now this sister that just fell out you folks couldn't see but her arms were moving like a jet propulsion and it reminded me the day 
after I had the experience, that first experience I had with the living creatures, I, my arms went like that. I'd drive a little bit, my arms would begin. <laughs> Hal is still going. Huh? <laughs> oh, he's letting us know there's some power that we haven't tapped into. We're beginning to tap in. We're beginning to tap in. We're beginning to tap in. We're tapping into the power of God. We're tapping into the glory of God. Hallelujah. Uh, let's sing it and reach out. Ding and may there's a wheel within the wheel and it's turning in me. It's turning in the glory. There's a fire within the fire and it's burning in me. Oh, it's burning in me. It's burning in me. There's a fire within the fire and it's burning in me. It's burning in the glory. I can see, I can see, I can see, I can see the glory, I can see the glory, I can see the glory, I can see, I can see, I can see the glory, I can see the glory. It's turning in me. It's turning in me. Let it turn. It's turning in me. There's a wheel within the wheel. And it's turning in me. It's turning in the glory.
I saw when you were sitting on the front today, I saw your life taking such a new direction. I saw you reaching out and taking a hold of God in a dimension you never had before. I saw you just clinging to him in such, even as Jacob clung to the angel, wouldn't let him go until he was blessed. And I saw God bringing into your life such a change. He's going to raise you up in these last days to do signs and wonders and exploits in this name. And he's going to teach you by his spirit in such a way. He's seen the hunger that's in your heart, those things that you've longed to know how to take a hold of in the realm of the Spirit. You're going to be able to do it. Amen. You're going to find yourself moving in greater spiritual authority. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Haribiando rishi abandaya. Hallelujah. Ho, 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 shikiando basi alande. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I speak a hastening of the Lord into his life. I speak the tearing up of schedules and timings. And I speak the timing of God to come into his spirit, to begin to pulsate in and through him. Oh, she and I, as our sister has felt the wheel turn, let him feel the timings of God in his soul. I speak a release of the timings of God into his soul and into his spirit. Oh, Tisula Bakaya, Halabo Risiamani, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Tialabo. I can feel the glow How she
Yala bando, yala bando. Oh, 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 oh,